Just to piggyback off the previous video that I actually did, I got a very interesting comment that asks, how would you write this in a file? How would you certify that a patient has died? So I thought it was actually a good idea. And lo and behold, this video, grab a piece of paper and let's go. Hello and welcome to MK's Medical Review Series. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. This is a series on my YouTube channel where we look at medical topics in depth. Today we're going to be looking at certifying a dead body. These are some of the things that you actually don't really get taught or sometimes they do orient you, but especially if you're in a department where people die a lot, for example, in internal medicine where people die almost every week, then this is a task that you cannot run away from because you will be called when you're on call that a patient has deteriorated, you go and you attempt to resuscitate them and you realize that the patient has demised. And there are also possible scenarios where you can actually get to the patient without even doing any intervention and realize that they have actually died. So death is a very common thing that is actually experienced in the hospital. So you should have some functional knowledge on how to certify a body dead or how to certify a person dead. So there are certain important things that we actually look for. And if we actually take these signs as individual signs, it actually is very unreliable because a person may have actually pupillary reactions that may still be absent, for example, in certain conditions and may be present in other conditions. So if someone has the pupils fixed and dilated, they can still be having some respiratory activity. They can still be having some cardiovascular activity. Yes, their brainstem may have been dead. They may be brain dead, but they are still technically legally alive. So which is why you must take all these signs as a combination and do not take them as individual signs. So there are certain things that we often look for. And usually I like to use this uh, schematic or I usually like to use this uh, progress of things to assess if someone has died. So the first thing that I usually do when I get there is, of course, I attempt to call the, uh, the patient, attempt to stimulate them with some verbal stimulus. Of course, they will not be able to respond. The next thing that I attempt to do is, of course, tactile stimulus. I hold their both their limbs and see the temperature of their limbs. If the temperatures of their limbs are cold, their peripheries are cold, they have extremely cold peripheries, and the lower limbs, that's another sign that's now pointing me towards this person, probably having demised. Then I go on and check the peripheral pulses. I check the radio pulse, I'll palpate both sides and see if there's anything. Of course, if someone is in shock, you may not be able to feel these radio pulses. You can even palpate the distal pulses in the lower limbs, the dorsalis pedis. You can palpate the posterior tibial, you can palpate the popliteal, you can palpate the radio, you can palpate the carotid arteries, just like that. So I palpate the peripheral pulses and see if the peripheral pulses are there. So the first thing that I'm checking is the temperature of the patient. The second thing that I'm checking is the peripheral pulses that uh, I'm also palpating to see if they're present, as well as the central pulses to see if they're present. But of course, in someone who is in severe shock, you still may not be able to feel these peripheral pulses and sometimes even the central pulses are weak. The next thing that I like to do is of course I like to get a torch, a pen torch and actually swing it into the eyes of this patient. I swing it into the left eye and see the reaction in the left pupil. I also look at the reaction in the right pupil. I'll swing it in the right eye and I'll look at the reaction in the right pupil and the reaction in the right eye as well as the reaction in the left eye. When a patient has actually demised both pupils will be fixed and dilated and they will not be responding to light. So that's the third thing that I'm checking for. The fourth thing that I'm checking for is now I come and look at the chest. Is there any activity on the heart? Is the heart beating? Am I seeing any vascular? Am I seeing any uh, activity in the precordium rather of the heart? I can even put my hands if I don't have my stethoscope at that particular moment, but you need your stethoscope. I put my hands over the heart valves to see if there's any heart. Uh, cardiac activity, I palpate the apex beat to see if there is any activity because remember you want to be thorough. This is the last activity that the patient, you're going to do for the patient. So imagine if you certify someone dead and you take them to the morgue and realize that this patient is not dead, then that's a big, big uh, implication on your medical progress. Then after I, after I do this with the heart, now I get my stethoscope and I place it over the heart valves and I make sure that I listen for a full minute. 
Never just put it there and then see, oh, there's no heartbeat. Take it off. Make sure that you listen for a full minute. You listen across the aortic area. You listen across the pulmonary area. You listen across the tricuspid area. You listen across the mitral area. If you even want to be thorough, you can listen with the diaphragm, which is the bigger part of your stethoscope. You can also listen with the bell, which is the smaller part of your stethoscope. So you check if there's any cardiac activity and you find out that there's no cardiac activity. Then of course you come to the respiratory system, you observe the chest, if the chest is rising and if there's any movements. Then of course you listen across all the layers and the zones of the lungs to see if there's any air entry into the chest and you should listen for a full minute. Then once you have examine this patient and listen to every single thing that I've talked about, then you can certify that the patient has died. You look at the time and you call, you call it you, that the time of death is such and such, so that you keep that uh, time in mind. So then you come to a point whereby you get to the patient, the nurse calls you that the patient has deteriorated condition, you get there and you examine them and you realize that this patient has actually demised. How then are you going to be able to document this in the file? Because this is a very important aspect. Remember, this sometimes can become a legal document. And if you don't write the right things, you may sometimes be in trouble in court. So this is to help you now understand how exactly I'm going to be able to document this. So just like any other notes that I'm making, the first thing that I'm going to be writing is, of course, our date. So suppose our patient died today. So this is the 5th of June. So 506-23. And let's say they died at 15 hours. So and if they died at 15 hours, it means that you can't write the notes before the patient died. So it must come after the patient died. So minutes after, you should check the time. So let's say they died at 15 hours exactly, and you're writing your notes maybe at 15.10. So you're going to write the time at which you're writing these notes at 15.10. The place. So let's say this is female medical ward. So this is female medical ward. So you should always include the date, the time and the place in your notes. This is a very important thing. Of course, your name at the top, there at the very top. So I'm going to write my name over there, Dr. Kazevu, right? Then underline. Okay. So the first statement that I usually like to write in my notes is that these notes are written in retrospect. So I'll just say that notes written in retrospect. Retro spect that's the very first thing then second thing that i'm going to be writing is that of course i was called to review a patient so called to review a patient called to review a patient that was said said to have changed condition to have changed condition okay if you want you can even write what the patient was being managed for so patient was being managed was being managed for let's just say aspiration pneumonia aspiration pneumonia pneumonia in CVA secondary to hypertension and this hypertension was uncontrolled okay so this is just the opening statements that will tell anyone who's reading your notes that okay this this person was called at this time and the person has changed condition then you can come now to your examination findings so an examine on examination our general examination, our GCS, so obviously if someone has died and you do a GCS, it's obviously going to be 3 out of 15 because that's the lowest score that you can actually get. So our GCS is 3 out of 15. We examine the pupils, so our pupils fixed, dilated, and not responding, responding, to light then cold peripheries peripheries with absent 
peripheral pulses, peripheral pulses, and there is no cardio respiratory activity. So anyone who's reading your notes will be able to tell that by the time you got to this patient and you examined this patient, this patient was dead. So even if you are writing any resuscitation notes, there's no point. It's like as if you're resuscitating someone that was already dead. So the next thing that you write here is, of course, our time of death, our TOD, which is 15 hours. We can even write our suspected cause of death, which in this case is aspiration pneumonia. Aspiration pneumonia. Pneumonia. Secondary to CVA. If it's hemorrhagic, you write hemorrhagic. Of course, write it in full cerebrovascular accident. Then this is secondary to hypertension, uncontrolled hypertension. Then, of course, our plan is the next thing. So our first thing that we write on our plan is, of course, we want to inform the relatives. Inform relatives. Number two, we want to inform the morgue that they're going to be receiving a body. Number three, we want to prepare the body for the morgue. Prepare body for the morgue. And then number four, may his or her soul rest in peace. Then of course you sign and your job is done. And this is how you're going to be documenting that this patient died at this time. Make sure you add your time of death. Make sure you add your cause of death. I really hope this helped shed a bit more light on what we do and how we examine patients and how we certify that a patient has actually died. If you enjoyed this video, very quick and brief, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell notification icon to be receiving notifications of such videos every time I post. Do not forget to drop a like, drop a comment on our road to 7,000 subscribers. To Zambia and beyond, my name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. Until next time, bye-bye.